Abuja Omari. I, I work for the African Innovation Foundation, and uh, I'm the director for Innovation Prize for Africa. So, um, in terms of the Innovation Prize for Africa, how many in the room have we actually heard of the prize? Out of curiosity, the Innovation Prize for Africa. Okay, good. Uh, it seems it's almost like 50-50. So uh, the prize has been running for about five years. We actually just celebrated five years anniversary in Botswana, Habarone. And uh, it was really good. And I have a few brochures here in case you are interested in seeing who won and what's the story about the IPA journey. So about quick about the foundation. So African Innovation Foundation has a, a motto that it's about engaging, inspiring, and transforming. And our goal is really to increase the prosperity of Africans by catalyzing the innovation spirit in Africa. So we focus on three thematic areas. One is the law and the governance. Another one is the innovation, science, technology, and that's where the price lies. And then we have social impact program, where, which we are piloting in Angola. Um, since I'm here to talk to you about Innovation Prize for Africa, I'm going to dive in really quickly. So the prize goal is about strengthening African innovation ecosystems through our platforms. I'm going to talk to you later about the platforms. At the same time, we're spurring the growth of innovative market-oriented solutions to African challenges. Our two target customers are innovators and also innovation enablers. So uh, as I will present later, you will see what we do uh, for innovators, but also what we're trying to accomplish together with innovation enablers. So in terms of the prize, you know, like uh, there's so many prizes happening right now, not just in Africa, but in, in Africa it's alone the quite a lot. And uh, sometimes people confuse those awards. They feel like, okay, there are too many, another prize. So I'm here to tell you that the IPA, the Innovation Prize for Africa, is really unique in a way that it gives a very good cash. Uh, the best winner gets 100,000 US dollars, and this is your money to keep, no string attached, except, of course, that you have to use the money to improve your innovation. You can just go shopping. And then the second one, uh, the, the winner of innovation with the highest business potential, gets 25,000 US dollars. And then we have a social impact focus prize, also 25,000 US dollars. And uh, we select additional seven nominees who each one goes home with 5,000 US dollars voucher that we use to support them moving forward. And of course, there's much more. What makes IPA unique is not just the cash, it's other th benefit that comes together with the words, including the media, publicity, the training, the networking, and uh, much more. Um, so what's happening right now? We just uh, launched our sixth edition uh, on the 27th of September. And uh, the theme this year is African innovation, investing in prosperity. And uh, you can get the details on how to apply by going on our website, www.innovationpriceforafrica.org. And uh, keeping in mind that we have a firm deadline. It's at the 3rd of January, 2017. Um, so the price is open to any innovator who is coming up with solutions that are addressing challenges in those five key areas. One is health and well-being. One is agriculture, another one manufacturing in the service industry. And then there is a, um, the ICTs, and then energy, environment, and water. Of course, we also say that if you have an innovation where you feel does not fit in any of those categories, just get in touch, and we will make sure that you are able to apply. We're looking for solutions that are solving African challenging you know, uh, problems. So we don't want to limit only on those sectors if you have something else that does not fit in. So how do we select our winners? We have uh, five criteria that we follow uh, through all the process. The first is originality, and this is where we assess innovation. So we want to know 
So you have created really something that is working, a product or a service, but is it unique? Is it different from existing product? So that's how we check the box innovation. The second one is the marketability. We, we don't hide it, we say we're looking for market-oriented innovations. And this does not include social innovations. We're just saying, as you innovate, think about the, the users. Would someone be able to actually pay to use your services? Even if it's subsidized by an NGO, but it has to be something that people will not just get for charity forever. So you need to be in like a sustainable model, business model where you can actually be able to, to grow. Scalability, I know <laughs> Michael said something about do something that doesn't scale, I was like, okay. <laughs> but I think what he meant, you understood what he meant. So for us, um, it's important that the innovation that you propose is scalable in the sense that we want um, those innovations that are tested in your community, in your country, but also you can cross the border and take them to your country. So if you're from Nigeria, can you actually take this innovation to Ghana where you just need to try to change, adapt to cultures, but you're not starting from the scratch? Can you take your innovation from Nigeria to Morocco, to Tunisia, to Egypt? Can actually you take your innovation outside of Africa? Because we need to start showing, as IPA have shown with the winners, the Africans are not only solving their own problems, but actually they're solving the world problems because we know we can do that. Social impact, um, this is goes without saying, we, they, basically we're calling for innovations that are solving a problem. So even if you have something that's really cool, sexy, we ask the question, so what? Who, who are you impacting? Who, how many people are benefiting? Who else is, is benefiting beyond you, the innovator? So the scale of the problem, of course, you're you addressing the higher social impact uh, you're going to have. And the last one is scientific and technical aspect. And I wanted to, to highlight that we don't only focus on the innovation as technology. For us, innovation does not necessarily have to be a technology. It could be technological, but it could be a process. It could be a business model. It could be anything that you, if you put into a system, you can increase efficiency. If that's a, te a technology or a service or a business model, we will take it. You just need to convince us that this is the original. So uh, our price is also known by having being very rigorous because we really take seriously the step we implement because we want to make sure that if you are selected as the winner of IPA, no one questions whether what you have is an innovation. So we put a stamp on your innovation, and everyone says, okay, it has been vali validated by AIF. It must be in innovative. So we have a seven steps. One is the pre-screening. This is where we get you know, innovation coming in. And then uh, automatically we trash the ones that just have no substance. And uh, the one that uh, where people have not completed the application. So sometimes innovators, um, because they're very busy people, they don't pay attention to the deadline, and then they submit at the last minute, where actually they send incomplete application. So even if your innovation sounds really good, if your um, application is not complete, we don't take it. So it has to be complete. And then there's a screening. Here we work with um, different experts mostly PhD students from very known universities to help us start now analyzing what we have received. So what they're checking is, is this, did this person make a case that they have a solution to a problem? So at this level, they're not really assessing whether your claims are true because they don't have, let's say, the, the narrow level of expertise of your innovation but they want to see if you put together a file that's convincing. And then the next one is the preliminary assessment. That's where we do harmonization. Uh, by the way, each step, we have at least a minimum two judges looking at one application to make sure there's no bias. Like people don't understand something, they say, oh, it's rubbish. So we build a mechanism to check that on that. And if 
uh, somehow two screen screeners, the judges disagree, we send this to, to another judge. And if one comes on one side, we can also send it to more judges. So we just make sure we mi minimize any chances of people missing out on the best innovation. And, and then the last one, that, uh, I mean the fifth one we do, uh, the due diligence. And here we're working with technical scientific experts. So any innovation, uh, it's about technology, it's about science, we actually send it to people in that field. Like we have in the room one, the winner of our uh, prize in 2015, Adnan Remar. Probably some of you heard of him when he was speaking on, you know, earlier today. So his innovation is the alternative to antibiotics for, uh, you know, um, the feed for animal. When I got that, I have, I don't know anything about that. I mean, I, I, I liked reading it, but I wouldn't understand or verify actually that once this is a problem and what are other solutions exist. So we had to find, actually we had to work with him to ask him, so this is your area, who are the experts in your area? So he gave us names, but also on our site, we reach out to other universities, scientific research, and we, we were able to get actually experts tell us, wow, this person is, is gonna change, his innovation will not just change Africa, it's gonna change the world. Because talking about, you know, you know, having something against resistance to antibiotics, which is the number one threat to humanity today. So and then we have a phone interview and at the end, we have a face-to-face -face meeting where we, we select 10 best innovators that we bring to the place where we're having the event. So here, we usually go from like around 900 applications, now them to 10, we bring them to a place where we're having an event, and there's more activity, pitching, uh, and th there we, we select the winners. So um, wh what makes the IPA unique? We feel like it, there's two levels for the winners. So you basically get a good cash, you know, 100,000 US dollars, no string attached. I think it's good. Uh, there's a, you have a chance to connect with investors because we have investors attending the event interested in making this. Uh, that we do, we work with our communication team to provide the training, marketing, uh, communication, uh, and other, you know, useful training. Like last year we worked with SeedStar to, to work on a business model canvas. And we also partner with the WIPO, the World Inte Intellectual Property, to run a workshop on how to protect your innovation. So there's a quite a, lo a long list. And of course, uh, for the nominees, the additional seven, you get 5,000 US dollars. There's investment opportunities. And of course, you tap into the whole network that is there for you. And uh, we're working also on different platforms. It's called Zua Hub is going to be launched early next year. And this is a platform for everyone who applied for IPA. People we call IPA family community to actually be able to collaborate and network. And so you have to be invited to be a part of the community. So um, recently we, we just had the event in, in Botswana. It was hosted by the country. Uh, the president of Botswana was there. And uh, the 10 nominees, um, are, you know, four of them were from South Africa, three from Nigeria, one from Benin, one from Egypt, one from Kenya. What's interesting, I think early today in the morning, people were talking about the ecosystems, uh, the, you know, the, um, the minister who spoke here today talked about how South Africa and Morocco are high up. So we have seen this through our prize. Every year we have a minimum of three nominees from South Africa. It's not because we choose the South Africans, but that somehow the innovation ecosystem is so strong that they know how to compete, they have the right file, they know how to pitch. But those are the things that anyone can learn. So in terms of the winners, uh, so the grand prize went to Valente Agon. He has a malaria treatment called Apipalu, which is a traditional medicine. Uh, the cure malaria is based on the traditional uh, plants, actually the, um, the palm tree. And the second prize went to Imogen Wright. His innovation is called Exotype. And this is another transformative innovation which is tackling 
the, um, the issue of uh, resistance, drug resistance, for people who have HIV AIDS. And now he just, rec he just received 540,000 uh, US dollars as a fund, as almost impact because he won the prize. So he got 25,000 US dollars. In less than three months, he gets now 540,000 US dollars as a grant to continue his, her, rich, her research. The social impact prize went to uh, Eddie Agbo. So he has also unique innovation. All of them do. <laughs> and his innovation is basically being able to test whether uh, you have a malaria using urine rather than blood. So you do it in your comfort of your home. In 25 minutes, you can tell if you have a malaria. And of course, now we have a combination. You test if you have a malaria. If you know you have it, you go to a pipalu. You have a traditional, with no side effect, medicine to treat you, all made in Africa by Africans. So uh, in terms of our achievement, today we have the largest database, about 6,000 um, plus innovators in our database from 50 African countries. We have about 24 uh, followers on Facebook and uh, many more on Twitter. Uh, we have... Um, invested, supported innovators somewhere around one million. But what's interesting, so we supported them with one million, but impact of this money is above, you know, 10, 11 million US dollars. Because one of the winners actually was able to raise 11 US, uh, 11,000 US, 11 million US dollars just after winning the prize. So uh, the event has been hosted in five countries, in Ethiopia, in South Africa, in Nigeria, Morocco, and Botswana. And uh, right now, we're basically starting the bidding process to know where we're going to host the prize uh, next year. Uh, plus, IPA has been you know, covered by the international organization like uh, WIPO, UNESCO, and uh, we recently sign uh, a name or you with WIPO to work with them so they can actually help our innovators uh, deal with the issue around the patent. So um, we invite you to be a part of our movement. We feel like IPA is not a competition, it's a movement that uh, is mobilizing African innovators and also mobilizing for African innovators because we believe this is the, the future. So if you are an innovator and entrepreneurs, what you have to gain is uh, you get your story heard, you know, you get the podium to actually share your story. And once you share your story, there's no end there. This is basically attract investment. That's how our winners are able to raise 11 million US dollars in a year. Because now no one is doubting, oh, this is no innovation. We have put a stamp on your innovation. Um, so if you participate, you ch start a chance to win big. And of course, you're going to be a part of this amazing network of African innovators.